Jasmine Francis is traveling to San Francisco. She talks to a fellow passenger about Hal Francis, her deceased husband. She paints an elaborate picture of meeting Hal and quitting college to be with him, an ideal love story. She continues her story even when they disembark. She doesn't shy away from sharing the most intimate details of their time together. She even tells the woman she'll be staying with her divorced sister, Ginger. They are both adopted, so according to her, they're not siblings. The woman soon sees her family and makes a run for it, before Jasmine gets the chance to start another anecdote. Jasmine reaches New Central Cafe. The address points out to an apartment near the cafe. She knocks on the door, but no one answers. Now panicking, she starts breathing heavily. The cab driver asks if she is doing fine. She says she is, and adds that sometimes she can't breathe properly, which makes her panic. She then tries calling her sister Ginger's phone. Her sister says it will be a while before she gets back. She has kept the keys to her apartment in the bar. Now breathing heavily and sweating, Jasmine runs to the bar to get the keys. Once her luggage is inside, she gives a hefty tip to the cab driver, enough to make him happy. But she doesn't look so thrilled as she looks around the house. In a flashback, Jasmine was exploring a huge apartment with Hal. He bought it for her and told her that his son, Danny, was going to live with them. They rejoiced. On Danny's birthday, Danny was with his dad. He told Hal that kids in his school say him and his family are really rich and that Hal gives money to charity. Hal taught him that one should share what one earns with the less fortunate as one goes through life. Not everyone is as lucky as they are. They hosted a lavish dinner party and Jasmine recounts how she told everybody that the song playing was the same song playing when she and Hal met. At present, Jasmine is talking to herself, sitting on the bed. Ginger calls out to her boys, who are helping their dad and Ginger's ex-husband Augie, move furniture. Augie asks her why she is in a hurry. Ginger's tell him that Jasmine has been a wreck, not just financially, but emotionally, too. She will be staying with her for a while. Augie reminds her that it is because of Jasmine and her husband. They lost a huge sum, and their marriage fell apart. Ginger defends her sister, saying that her husband was a crook, not her. But Augie doesn't buy into that. Hal was involved in all kinds of bank fraud and phony real estate dealings, and it is hard to believe she didn't know anything about her husband's finances. He also reminds Ginger of the times when Jasmine had everything, and not once did she care for her sister. But now that she's broke, she wants Ginger to shelter her. In a flashback, some friends have gathered in Jasmine's country house. The wives discuss their non-involvement in their husband's business affairs. They thought it was best to look the other way. Ginger greets Jasmine and introduces the kids to their aunt. Jasmine tells Ginger she is broke and had to move out of her house in Brooklyn because she can't pay rent. She says the government took everything and she can't be alone because bad thoughts come to her. Jasmine was anxious to move because she didn't know how angry Ginger would be. Jasmine complains about the flight and reveals she flew first class. Ginger confronts her, if she was broke, how could she afford first class? Jasmine gets defensive and says she doesn't know. Ginger's two sons come running into the room. They are playing with toy guns. Jasmine is getting irritated by the noise of the toy. One of the boys asks Jasmine if she was adopted, and she replies that she was, and so was Ginger. But Ginger ran away from home because their mom liked Jasmine more. The kid reveals that his dad used to say that they are lucky Jasmine resides far away from them. A flashback shows Jasmine walking with a friend after shopping. She shared that her sister, Ginger, and her husband, Augie, are visiting New York for a week. She disparaged her by calling her the slow one. Soon, Ginger and Augie arrived, and they complimented the house that Jasmine has decorated. Ginger was excited to go around town with Jasmine, but Jasmine was reluctant and blunt about things. She suggested their driver would take them, but Ginger insisted that Jasmine come. Things got awkward when Ginger wanted to take Jasmine and Hal to dinner, and Jasmine said they already have plans for dinner. She took a jibe at their humbleness, recalling all the expensive places they like to go. Unaffected by the blatant display of her riches, Ginger insisted on taking her out on her birthday. Jasmine deflected the topic again. Augie had some business plans, which they would like to discuss at dinner. Jasmine dreaded these five days. The sisters went shopping and spent some time together. While sitting beside the pool, Augie and Ginger told them the reason they had come to New York. They won a lottery of $200,000 and wanted to start a business. Ginger insisted Augie use Hal's expertise, and Hal suggested investing in his venture for 20% profit. Ginger trusted her sister and her husband with their money, but Augie didn't. He thought it was not a good idea to invest the entire sum in one venture, instead of starting a business of his own. In the evening, Jasmine asked her husband if he will make money for her sister. He replied that he will make money, and hence they will make money. The next day, Ginger and Augie explored New York City. While they're in the car, Ginger spotted Hal with another woman. He kissed her before sending her off in a taxi. At Jasmine's birthday party, Ginger asked Jasmine about the girl Hal was talking to. Jasmine said she was a family friend. Ginger tried to warn Jasmine about Hal but Jasmine brushed it off. Ginger found herself in a dilemma about whether to tell Jasmine what she saw. So she asked Augie for advice, and he said there is nothing to worry about. 
Ginger was concerned about her sister because she thought Jasmine had a habit of looking the other way. That night, Jasmine, acting a little drunk, asked Tal what he was talking to Jaylene about. He said, nothing in particular. He then told her that Jaylene's husband was going out of town, so Jasmine should take her out for lunch sometime. Even though Jasmine acted as if it was okay, she knew what was going on behind her back. At present, Ginger is insisting Jasmine meet her new love interest, Chili. They go to lunch together and wait for Chili. Chili comes with a friend, so Jasmine doesn't feel alone. Jasmine gets anxious when Chili hugs her, and when his friend picks her drink to smell it. Chili asks about her plans, now that she is living with Ginger. Jasmine says she's thinking of going back to school to become an anthropologist. The conversation couldn't get more unpleasant, but it does. The fact that she was on top of the world, and then came down crashing because her husband was a crook, is rubbed in her face. Chili's friend insinuates that Jasmine might have epilepsy, citing her habit of staring into nothingness. Surprisingly, she keeps her cool. Chili suggests they take her sightseeing and then return to his place. After some awkward posing for many pictures, they return to Chili's place. Chili hands each of them a glass of Russian vodka, and the conversation steers to Hal eliminating himself by hanging. They discuss what happened, and call Hal a bad man who lived a luxurious lifestyle off others' money. He even took Ginger's and Augie's money too, duping them of their lottery money. A flashback takes us to Hal and Jasmine exercising at a gym. Hal asked Jasmine if she wanted to see the game that evening, but she took a pass, she never understood baseball. He asked if he can take Melanie, another common friend working out with them, since she was a fan. This, again, was one of Hal's shenanigans. The four reach Ginger's house. Ginger and Chili's friend Eddie take in the groceries. Chili stops Jasmine to talk, telling her that Eddie wants her phone number so he can take her out on a date. Jasmine refuses, saying she is not ready to date yet. Chili wants to know how long she plans to stay, because he has big plans for Ginger and himself. Jasmine says she is grateful for her sister's help, but she too, wants to get out of the house as fast as she can. Their conversation is pretty blunt and without filters, and listening to it would make anyone drown and cringe, especially when he asks about her nervous breakdown, where she was found in the street talking to herself. Jasmine takes on a strong front and tells Chili to mind his business. Ginger asks Jasmine what she thinks of Chili. She knows Jasmine and Chili didn't hit it off, but Jasmine takes it up a notch by saying he is like Augie, a loser. Ginger changes the topic and reminds her of what Eddie said, about a vacancy for a receptionist at a dentist's office. But Jasmine thinks it is too menial. Ginger suggests she do something in fashion or design, since everybody loves her style. But the courses are a bit expensive. Jasmine says she can do it online, but she is computer illiterate. So she needs to learn how to use a computer first, and then she can take design classes. Failing at being supportive, Ginger says it is a tedious task, and Jasmine snaps at her for being so negative all the time. But in order to fund the courses, she needs money. Jasmine is left with no choice but to take the receptionist job at the dentist that Eddie mentioned. The initial days are a struggle for Jasmine. She cannot handle the work pressure, doesn't get a single word taught in computer class, and gets weary of the customers who are replicas of what she used to be. Overwhelmed by all the work pressure, she takes her anxiety medicine to calm her nerves. Back in the past, Danny, Hal's son, had completed his education at Harvard. Hal was taking Danny to Augusta for his master's degree. Jasmine is having another one of her episodes. She thinks she's living in the past, back when she was rich, and Hal was still with her. People see her talking to herself in the street, and they stare at her, dumbfounded. She soon realizes what she is doing and heads back. Dr. Flicker asks her what she is always studying. She tells him about her plans to study interior design, and how she has to study computers for that. He asks her not to do it during working hours, because her work is being hampered. She apologizes, saying it won't happen again. Dr. Flicker then asks her out for a drink, and she says she can come, but they will have to make it quick, as she is meeting her boyfriend after that. Her anxiety pill helps her deal with such situations, so she takes one more. In a bar, Dr. Flicker compliments her beauty, but Jasmine is too dazed to comprehend anything. She remembers the day Danny dropped out of Harvard. She tried her best to persuade him not to throw his future away, but Danny was too embarrassed by his father's doings that he just could not handle college. He then turned to ask Jasmine how naive she was to have overlooked all his father's misappropriations. He accused her of being blinded by the gifts his dad showered her with. He used them to make her turn a blind eye to everything that was going on, and she fell for it. Jasmine is trying to study. Chili and his two friends have come to see the match at Ginger's place. Ginger asks them to keep it quiet, but Chili doesn't care. He tells his friends how Jasmine was loaded, and didn't care about her sister, who was waiting tables. Now that she is in need of finances, she has finally remembered that Ginger exists. Jasmine walks in, and the swordplay between her and Chili resumes. Jasmine has started relying on her medications a lot. She takes them in every situation where she has to interact with anybody. Chili brings up the conversation of Hal stealing all of Ginger's money again, and Jasmine puts her foot down. She firmly tells him that she has lost everything too. The government seized all her assets and bank accounts, leaving her broke. 
She starts pouring a drink for herself and shaking violently as she pleads with them to let her study. Ginger takes matters into her hands and tells the guys to leave, but she handles the situation efficiently so no one gets offended. Jasmine hates Chili. She doesn't forget to remind Ginger that she can do better, but Ginger makes a sarcastic dig at her too. Jasmine was too gullible and spoilt by Hal to the extent that she never questioned his integrity. Even when she did raise some concerns that her friends who had invested in Hal's business had, he would always give an excuse about how much money they'll be losing if they didn't go forward with the plan. He would then ask Jasmine what she wants as to distract her from the real issues. Late at night, Jasmine is still at work, trying to get a patient to choose a date for their next appointment. The older woman can't decide between the dates. Once she has dealt with her, Dr. Flicker comes. He tries to make advances at her again, but this time, he crosses the line and forces himself on her. She pushes him off, hard, and quits the job instantly. She is flushed and sweating, unable to breathe because of the trauma she just went through. Jasmine shares the incident with Sharon, her friend from computer class. She says some comforting words and advises her to drag the doctor to court. But Jasmine is hesitant to go to court again. She asks Sharon if she knows any men she can meet. Sharon invites her to a party with her and her boyfriend, Tony. Jasmine plans to take Ginger to the party for moral support. She's excited to show up in social gatherings after a very long time. Back in the day, Hal had just met Amy, his new lawyer. Jasmine confronted Hal about having an affair with her. Someone told her that Hal had lunch with Amy and even held her hand. Jasmine confessed she was jealous because women found Hal attractive. But he assured her that she had him, so she shouldn't be afraid of such things happening. She asked him once again if he was having an affair. He assured her nothing was going on, and they indulged in intimacy. At the party, Jasmine talks to herself, remembering this incident. An older man asks if she is talking to him. Sharon comes and introduces Tony. She asks Jasmine about her sister, and Jasmine points toward Ginger. Ginger is busy dancing with Al. Al is a sound engineer, and it seems like he liked Ginger at first glance. He compliments her, and she blushes. Jasmine walks to another room to be away from the crowd. There, she meets Dwight Westlake, who is reading alone. He instantly shows interest. They start talking, and he compliments her style. He names all the brands she is wearing, which impresses Jasmine. He confesses that his late wife worked in the fashion industry. He works in the State Department, in diplomatic corps. She asks if he is an ambassador, as her husband knew the ambassador of Mexico. He asks if she is married, and she says her husband, like his wife, passed away. He tells her he works in Vienna. They start telling each other about themselves. When Dwight asks what her husband did, she lies and says he was a surgeon. She also lies about not having any children, and about being an interior designer. Dwight thinks he has hit the jackpot. He has just bought a house in Marin, and is looking for an interior designer. He asks her to help him with the decoration. It turns out that Ginger spent the night with Al. They take a stroll and discuss their time together. They also clear any misconceptions they might have about each other. Ginger says she has never been with anybody this sweet. Al knows about Ginger being in a relationship, and asks if he got her in trouble. She says he didn't, as she and Chili are not even engaged. She likes Al and spends some more time with him. It's the next morning, and Jasmine is getting anxious again. She is waiting for a text or a call from Dwight, but he hasn't reached out. She also has a headache, so she yells at Ginger's kids to keep it down. Ginger calls out the lies Jasmine told Dwight, but Jasmine snaps. She explains that she may have omitted certain details, but her humor and her wit are all real. There is an aggressive knock on the door. Ginger goes to answer it, and Jasmine goes to the other room to stop the children from wreaking havoc. Chili enters in anger and confronts Ginger for going to a party. A bartender friend of his saw her dancing with another guy. A mess follows. Chili and Ginger get into a fight. Ginger accuses him of rushing her into things, and Chili accuses Jasmine of instigating Ginger into going to party with her. He calls Jasmine names, when suddenly, the phone rings. Jasmine thinks it is Dwight, but it is Al. Ginger and Chili fight over the phone, which ends with Chili breaking the phone. Ginger has had enough, and she throws Chili out of her house. Chili leaves, smashing things on his way out. Jasmine's phone finally rings. She picks it up, and it's Dwight. She pretends to be in the middle of something, and then puts up her most charming front. After the call ends, she cries. She's going to meet him that afternoon. Dwight is giving Jasmine a tour of his new house. Jasmine is completely awestruck by the spectacular residence. She lies about decorating beach houses, and Dwight pulls her in for an intimate kiss. Jasmine then spends the night with Dwight. They are officially dating now. Jasmine accompanies him to pick furniture for the house. The next few days are like a dream come true. Jasmine is lost in Dwight's charm and the lifestyle he is providing her. Ginger is now seeing Al, and she is happy with him. Al is a sweet, caring guy, unlike the people she has been with in her past. Ginger is on a date with Al, and Jasmine is babysitting her kids. Jasmine has been drinking, and she starts telling the kids about her life. It is more like she is talking to herself, assuring herself that she wasn't some rich mindless lady. She did things worth remembering. The kids don't understand her, but she keeps talking. 
She doesn't make any sense, but she admits that people have picked her up from the streets, where they found her talking to herself. The conversation takes a dark turn when she tells them how she feels, from her claustrophobia to her nervous breakdowns. The children are now scared, but she continues. She tells them how she found Hal with another woman, and how one thing led to another. But now, she is a different woman, because she has found somebody new. While Jasmine helps Dwight with his house, he proposes to her. He asks her to come to Vienna with him. There, she can have all the cakes and all the wine she wants. Jasmine gets so worked up, that she takes a pill to calm herself. She lies, saying the pill is for a headache. Despite her anxiety, she is happy, and hugs Dwight. Chili comes to Ginger's workplace and tries to win her back. He says he is a wreck without her, and she says she wants a break from all of this. She calls him a grease monkey, berating him for being so aggressive. He admits he doesn't like Jasmine, and how she is using her. But Ginger is not ready to listen to anything. Chili starts crying, and Ginger tries to make him stop. Jasmine is in a good mood. She brings some flowers back home. Ginger is ready to go on a date, having doused herself in perfume. She tells Jasmine it is French perfume, which triggers another memory from the past. Jasmine was meeting her friend. Her friend told her that Hal was having an affair with Lysette Boudreaux. Jasmine was stunned, but she was more shocked to learn that it had been going on for years, not just with one girl, but with many. Everybody knew, but her. Her friend told her all the names she knew. She was amazed Jasmine took so long to figure it out. Jasmine broke down, drowning her sorrows with wine. Ginger is waiting for Al. But when he doesn't show up, she calls his workplace, and he says he can't come into work, because his wife Ellen found out he was cheating. Ginger is astonished to hear the news, Al never mentioned he was married. Ginger is left heartbroken. Dwight is taking Jasmine to pick up the engagement ring. As they browse through the window, Augie calls Jasmine from behind. He sounds bitter. He still holds resentment against her and her husband, for what they did to him. She congratulates him on his new job in Alaska, and he retorts that he would have had his own company by now, if it were not for her deceptive husband. Jasmine tries to end the conversation, but Augie continues. He is upset, he doesn't have money, and has to do something to make ends meet. He tells her he met her son Daddy. He lives across the bridge in Oakland and works at a music store. He is married, now that he is finally over his dad's decision to end himself. Jasmine is surprised to hear that Danny is in Oakland. Before Augie leaves, he says that not everybody can put their past behind them. Dwight is perplexed at this revelation. He takes her back to the car, and they have a huge fight while driving back home. Jasmine talks gibberish. After she frantically switches from one topic to another, she finally has a mental breakdown. She asks Dwight to stop the car. Dwight questions her sanity, but he lets her out and drives away. Jasmine drops her purse and everything in it. She quickly starts gathering her things. She then adjusts her dress, flicks her hair, and starts walking. Ginger is back with Chili after being deceived by Al. As gullible as Ginger is, she takes Chili's side now. She is sick of Jasmine calling him a loser, and she won't be listening to Jasmine's opinions anymore. She calls her thing with Al a fling, promising that nobody can replace Chili. Jasmine visits Danny in his shop. The first question she asks him is if he gave up Harvard to sell secondhand musical instruments. Danny had asked Augie not to tell Jasmine about his whereabouts. Jasmine asks him why he cut all contact with her. He says he knows the whole story, so she doesn't have to act as if she cares. In the past, Hal had just come home. Jasmine confronted him about his affair. She told him she knew all about the affairs he had been having for years. But Hal said this was different. He and Lysette were in love with each other, and they were making plans for their future. Jasmine could not accept this. Lysette was a teenager, for God's sake. It would bring great humiliation to her. Hal promised he would take good care of her, but Jasmine was not ready to listen to anything. She lost control of her emotions again, and Hal had to pin her down, to stop her from doing anything drastic. Hal could not take it anymore. He told her he was going to check into a hotel. He left, and Jasmine continued acting erratic. She found her phone and called the FBI. The police found Hal in the street. They told him they had a warrant for his arrest, handcuffed him, and took him in. Danny says he hates Jasmine for turning her own husband in. Jasmine says she did it in the heat of the moment, and she regrets it. But Danny doesn't want to hear her out. Jasmine says she needs him, but he wants nothing to do with her. He is finally happy in his life, thanks to his wife, and he doesn't want anything from his past to linger. He asks her to get out of his life. Jasmine comes back home, and Ginger offers her some champagne chili bought, to celebrate their getting back together. But she refuses. She is not in a celebratory mood. Ginger tells her they're moving together. This is it for Jasmine. Once again, she calls out Ginger for her taste in men, and reminds Ginger there are men who don't rip phones off walls. But Ginger stops her. She berates Jasmine for constantly picking on Chili. Jasmine taunts Ginger, saying that she will always choose losers, because that is what she thinks she deserves. And that is why she is living like this, and will never have a better life. Ginger finally speaks up for herself. She says that Jasmine is living like this, because she married the biggest loser of all time. She went her own way, while he took Ginger's only chance of having a great life. Chili intervenes, saying it is an occasion to celebrate, and not the time to fight over the past. 
Jasmine says she is not going to defend herself now. She will move out of the house that day and help Dwight decorate his house. They will soon marry. She's going to move in with Dwight, just like he asked her to. She adds that he is one of those men who are lost without a woman, and that woman has to be a plus for his career. And according to Jasmine, she has the social skills required for his future in politics. She sweats excessively as she says so, and then goes to take a shower. She says she'll send someone for her luggage soon. Chili says he was angry at many things too, but he kept it inside. Ginger praises him for his patience, and they playfully fight for the last slice of pizza as Jasmine walks out the door. She walks down the street, sits on a bench, and starts talking to herself. She talks about Danny getting married, and her favorite song, Blue Moon. But for some reason, her memory is clouded, and she can't remember the lyrics. It seems like her last shot at comforting herself has vanished. 